Hello Abacus users, what's up? Welcome to another training package of Abacus. In this video, we will explain this and VDIS subroutines from the very beginning, so stay with us till the end. Before you start seeing this package, you need to know the basics of Abacus. If you don't know, don't worry at all, because by seeing the Abacus for a beginner's package, you can learn the basics. By knowing the basics of Abacus, you can see and understand the current package. And if you want to learn more about the Abacus subroutines, we recommend seeing the Deload and VDLoad package. This package includes 15 minutes of tutorial video in the form of a lesson and workshops covering all features, tips and step-by-step -step simulation. There are basic examples in three workshops to show you how to use DISP and VDISP subroutines along with a deep understanding of the variables of these subroutines. Moreover, only the simulation files will be at your disposal. Feel free to explore our website to discover a wide range of packages and if you have any inquiries about our products, don't hesitate to reach out to us via our social media channels. Without further delay, let's dive right into the tutorial. Hello Abacus users, what's up? Welcome to another training package of Abacus. In this video, we explained DISP and VDISP subroutines from the very beginning, so stay with us till the end. Before we start, let's see what we're going to learn from this package. In the first chapter, we'll talk about what the DISP and VDISP subroutines are and when we need them. After that, we will present some of their applications in the real world and then tell you about the differences between the DISP and VDISP subroutines. In the second chapter, we'll learn how to use the DISP subroutine, including where to find the subroutine interface, learning about the subroutine variables and required settings in the Abacus CAE. And in the last chapter, we'll learn all these things, this time about the VDISP subroutine. This package guides you on applying your newfound knowledge through three workshops. In the first workshop, a 3D beam is modeled and multidirectional displacement is applied to it. In the second workshop, time and location dependent displacement is applied to the 3D beam. And the last workshop involves modeling a 3D beam and sequentially applying displacement, velocity and acceleration in a single direction both in the standard and explicit solvers. Well, enough about the intro, intro and let's get right into it. The first question we need to answer is what are the DISP and VDISP subroutines? In a very simple form, these subroutines are used to define user-defined boundary conditions. For example, when you need to define a boundary condition to be time-dependent or location-dependent, or even both, you should use the DISP and VDISP subroutines. But let's take a closer look and see where exactly these subroutines fit in, a, in the Abacus solving algorithms. This flowchart represents the standard solver procedure. You can see that after the start of each iteration, the solver calculates which parameters. When it comes to defining loads, a DISP subroutine is one of the subroutines that comes in handy. We have the same thing in the explicit solver. As you see, after the start of each increment, we could use VDISP subroutine so that the solver user uses this subroutine to define user-defined uh, loads and boundary conditions. Now I think you have the idea when we need the DISP and VDISP subroutines. Don't worry, better understanding always lies in examples, so you'll better understand the workshops. But let's see uh, some of these subroutines applications in the real world. In a research which you'll see its reference at the end of this video, a finite element model is established. To investigate the influence of groundwater level fluctuation on peat properties, is the mod Hello again. Welcome to the first workshop of the DISP and VDISP package of Abacus. In this workshop, we are going to model a 3D beam as you see in the picture and apply multi-directional and conditional displacement on it with the DISP subroutine. First, let's see the dimensions of this beam. As you see, this beam has a rectangular cross-section with the dimensions of 50 times 50 millimeters and its length equal, equals 600 millimeters. As for the material properties, we only insert the elastic modulus and Poisson's ratio, which you can see their values here. The analysis step is the static general. 
Now let's see the boundary conditions. One end of this beam is fixed. On the other end, the displacement boundary condition is applied. In the U3 direction, we have 0.5 mm displacement and 0.25 times the Y coordinate of each node for the U1 direction. But that's not all. We have a condition here. We made a condition that a specific node, node number 367, has a 0.5 mm displacement in the U1 direction and all the other nodes have the displacement we just set. Moreover, another displacement is applied on this edge of the model in the U2 direction, which is time dependent as you see here. Don't worry, we'll explain how to insert these displacements in the subroutine. Workshop on the DISP and WeDISP package of Abacus. In this workshop, we are modeling the same 3D beam as we did in previous workshops. However, this time we will utilize both the DISP and VDISP subroutines to apply one directional displacement, velocity and acceleration, both in the standard and explicit solvers. As mentioned earlier, the geometry of the model remains unchanged as illustrated in the figure pro provided. We will also be using the same material properties throughout the simulations. In all simulation, this end is fixed. To begin, we will conduct the simulation using the static general step. This step will allow us to apply one directional displacement in the U2 direction as shown in the di diagram. Following that, we will proceed with additional simulations using the, both the dynamic implicit and dynamic explicit solvers. These simulations will involve applying one directional velocity and acceleration in the V2 and V A2 directions respectively. The relations of velocity and acceleration depicted here are time dependent. Although these examples may seem simple, our objective is to properly demonstrate the usage of these subroutines. Now let's move on to Abacus and users. Welcome to the second workshop on the DISP and VDISP package of Abacus. In this workshop, we are modeling the same 3D beam as we did in workshop 1. However, this time we will utilize the VDISP subroutine to apply displacement boundary conditions that vary with both time and location. First and foremost, the geometry of the model remains unchanged from the previous workshop. The material properties also remain the same, but this time we have included density as we will be conducting a dynamic explicit analysis. The time period for our analysis will be 0.01 second. At one end of the model, we have a fixed boundary condition, while at the other end, we will apply a displacement boundary condition in the U3 direction. This boundary condition varies with time and location, as illustrated in the equation provided. In this equation, Y represents second components, component of the coordinates for each. I hope you have received the items that you're looking for in this package. Follow us on our social page and website. Have a nice day. Hope to see you again.